My name is Doug Parker, host of Cruise Radio, and this is a tour of the newly refurbished Carnival Freedom. Before we get to Carnival Freedom, if you like this video and you'd like to see more ship tours, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. As I mentioned, this ship was refurbished recently. If you want to see the exact changes, I did a video on it called Nine Carnival Freedom Dry Dock Changes. I'll link to it right here and also in the description below. All right, so let's get to the basics here. Carnival Freedom was launched in 2007. She's 110,000 gross registered tons, carries 2,980 guests, and she's 952 feet long. As far as the staterooms are concerned, she has 54 suites. She has six scenic ocean view suites. Those are those um, suites in the front of the ship that have the floor to ceiling windows. Just amazing views right there above the navigational bridge. 521 balconies, 334 ocean view rooms, and 575 interior cabins. We're going to start the tour on deck number three. One and two are mostly, actually they're all just staterooms. So you're going to have your interior staterooms, your porthole staterooms, and your ocean view on deck one and two. Deck three all the way forward is where we're going to start this tour, though. That's where you're going to have the main lounge and the stage up there. Deck three, the main level of the Victoriana main lounge. That goes deck three, deck four, and deck five. Your main seating on deck number three. Uh, decent, uh, decent views in here. Some A couple of obstructions you want to check and maybe scope the area out before you go to a main show. Plenty of seating and not really a bad seat on the third floor. I would say if you're looking for a seat in the main theater, deck three closest to the stage is probably one of the best seats in the house. Deck four and five, not so much. You'll have three main banks of elevators on Carnival Freedom. You'll have six regular elevators in the front, four mid and four aft. But additional to the six in the front, you'll have the four glass elevators that hug the lobby. And those go from all the way uh, down from deck two all the way to deck number 11. And of course, you have those scenic atrium views when you're taking those four glass elevators. Coming out of the main theater here, passing the elevators, you'll go through the Millennium Lobby or the atrium. That's where the Internet Cafe is. Also, the Shore Excursions Desk and Guest Service. Services. And just past the atrium is the main dining room. So there are two main dining rooms on Carnival Freedom. There's the Chic Restaurant, which is the uh, mid one. And then there is the Posh Restaurant. That's a fancy name. That's going to be in the aft. So both of them are two stories. One of them is used for anytime dining and one of them is used for traditional dining. Traditional is the 6, 15, and 8, 30. It might be. I always get these numbers confused. I think it's like 6 and 8, 15 for traditional. And then the your time dining just show up when you want to eat pretty much. And you can either wait or get seated right away depending on how crowded the restaurant is. Deck number three does have an obstruction if you want to transit from the chic restaurant, the midship one, back to the posh restaurant, which is the aft one. The galley is right between those two restaurants. So if you want to go from the front of the ship to the back of the ship on deck number three, you'll want to go down to deck number two or up to deck number four because they're not going to let you walk through the galley unless you pay, what, $100 for a behind the fun tour. So what we'll do is go up to deck number four in the midship dining room and go through the side hallway. On the way back to the aft main dining room, you're going to pass the Club O2. That's the teens club here on Carnival Freedom. Well, on every Carnival ship, really. And then before you get to the aft main dining room, there is some kind of lounge it's like a dance club, uh, Latin band I've seen in there. It all really varies on the sailing, but there's a, a music venue you'll walk through. There was a bar in here, and I believe it was called the Habana Bar. So I was calling it the Havana Bar, but it's Habana with a B. And then leaving the Habana Bar, you're going to come to the aft main restaurant, which is the Posh Restaurant. Cool thing on the ships in this era here, there's that bandstand that's on the second level of both of the main dining rooms, and it's normally like on deck four overlooking deck number three. And I remember sailing Carnival Destiny in the late 90s, and they used to have a piano player in there playing some classical tunes while you're, you know, eating dinner. Back then it really didn't phase me, but now looking at it, I'm like, yeah, that'd be kind of cool to have that instead of just a piped in music they use these days. Um, if you want a good seat back here, just ask to be sat against the back window in the posh restaurant. You have some great views, some scenic ocean views here. And of course, depending on what time the sun is setting and what time of or what time of year it is and what time your dinner is, you could have a pretty spectacular sunset view back here in the aft part of the posh restaurant. All right, we'll go up to deck number five now. We'll start in the back at the International Aft Lounge. That's where the Punchliner Comedy Club is held. Also some other events during the sailing. I believe they hold their Michael's Crafts. 
um, thing in here as well. Punchliner Comedy Club does have two different seatings. They have a PG show and an adults-only show. Adults-only show does get pretty crowded. One good thing about the lounge here on this class of ship, on these Conquest-class ships, is that it's pretty big, and it has this swivel benches. So you could actually swivel your bench to face someone or put your back towards them to watch this show. I found that to be really interesting on this class of ships. Leaving the International Aft Bar or the Punchline or Comedy Club, whatever you want to call it, you're going to have the Decades Atrium there, a little atrium that kind of overlooks the main dining room down on decks number three and deck number four. No higher than deck number five, though. On your port side, you're going to have the Swing Time Bar, just a cool little jazz club in here. Every time I go to one of these bars, I always see the karaoke machine set up on the stage. So I'm assuming that this is pretty much like the dedicated karaoke lounge. And then just opposite of the swing time bar, you're going to find the piano bar, Scott's piano bar. I do find it funny that they call it a piano bar, but there's only a piano in there. There's no actual bar in there, except there are a lot of servers. So if you want to get a drink in there, somebody will be with you like in every five minutes asking if you want to refill, especially if you have that cheers package. Outside of the piano bar is the alchemy bar, the bar that cures what ails you. The bartenders there, correction, alchemists, don't call them a bartender, they get upset. They like to uh, sling you some drinks, mostly made with um, like fresh ingredients. So I like the cucumber sunrise. That's a muddled cucumber, a little bit of watermelon syrup there. What else do they have in there? Vodka and I think maybe some ginger beer. Wow, I love it. I get it every time. Also some other creative drinks and they're going to set you back around $13 per drink in there once you throw in the gratuity and all of that. You can make them a little stronger if you want or make it a double for a little bit more. They also do have specials here as well. Just catty corner of the uh, Alchemy Bar is the 70s Disco Nightclub. This really not if you remember the other ships where they have like the hands in the nightclub and Joe Farkas really did a number on a lot of these nightclubs on these uh, this class of ships. But this one, pretty laid back. Just a couple of disco balls in here just to kind of dance the night away. A big circle dance floor and plenty of seating around the dance floor as well. Just outside of the dance club, you're going to have the warehouse arcade. Got some cool little games happening in there. Some skee ball, also some driving games, and uh, I think they have the Daytona still. They used to have Daytona in there. That was kind of always a, a fun race car game to play. Outside of the arcade, you're going to come along the promenade, and then the Red Frog Pub is going to be on your left hand side. The Red Frog Pub is where you're going to be able to find that live music, the acoustic guitar player at night. You could also get a flight of your favorite Caribbean rums here as well, and just a good time and a really chill place and a spot that really comes to life at nighttime during the daytime mostly just some pub games happening uh, happening in here maybe some beer pong and some foosball little this little that the internet cafe is just outside of the red frog pub so is the coffee shop and carnival adventures this is a new spot that was built uh, during the refurb kind of um, so they have a little bit of everything in here, mostly excursion type stuff. So like your snorkels, your masks, your flippers, but also some cameras in here. And it's just a little bit of everything. It's kind of like a, one of their logo shops, but more for stuff to use during your cruise and not like a knickknack to take home with you. Just forward of Carnival Adventures is the Babylon Casino. Casino bar is going to be right to your port side, right when you enter, or to your left side. So the casino bar is located in the back of the casino. And as you make your way through the casino, you'll find some slot machines, some table games, some of those skill machines where you can drop the claw and try to grab $10,000 in cash or line that key up just right. I was actually eating dinner with a guy one night on a ship, and he was basically saying that these machines, without getting into too much detail because he'd probably get in trouble, he said these machines are not built to be on your side. They're built to make money and they do a darn good job at it. Just outside of the casino on deck number five is Cherry on Top. That's the specialty store that they have the candy and the champagne and the flowers and all that in there. The fun shop's going to be both on the port and starboard side. So this area is pretty much nothing but stores. As you make your way around, you're kind of hugging the atrium. You can look down to deck three and see the atrium bar down there in the glass elevators. A good spot to take a photo on this deck as well if you want to get a good atrium photo shot. Um, so around the corner here, you're going to have the Skybox Sports Bar. That's the sports bar on board. No smoking in here. By the way, we didn't talk about the casino smoke situation. Wasn't really existent when I walked through there. Maybe a couple of people in there smoking. 
didn't really notice it, didn't phase me, but um, I'm sure that, you know, once it's cranking late at night, it could get a little smoky, could have the tendency to, but it wasn't bad at all when I walked through there. Anyway, back to the Skybox Sports Bar. You got your TVs in here, your up-to-the-minute sports ticker, good place to watch the game on Sunday. Deck number five is also where you're going to find the cheap seats to the main theater. So you're going to have decks three, four, and five, as we said earlier. Deck number five, a good place to sit if you cannot sit through the shows and you want to kind of ease out of there. A couple of cool little strategically placed benches and tables on deck number five at the very top. Good place to slip in and out if you want to. Not to mention the seating isn't the best up here anyway. So if you're going to sit up here, you're probably not going to watch the show. Decks number six, seven, and eight are all stateroom decks. However, decks number six and seven forward do have those secret decks. They really, I mean, are they really a secret deck? I don't know. People call them that. But you just walk all the way to deck six or deck seven forward. Go out the doors there on the port and starboard side, and you're basically in the very front of the ship. Just don't be too stupid because one deck above you on deck seven is going to be the bridge on eight. So um, they can see everything you're doing and probably going to laugh at you if you really try to do the Titanic thing. Deck number nine is the Lido deck, and that's where all the action happens. The Blue Iguana Tequila Bar, the Blue Iguana Cantina, Guy's Burger Joint, and the Red Frog Rum Bar, all right here on the Lido deck. Also that Lido deck pool and two hot tubs. Now the sun area, the sun situation here. So how it works is on deck number 10, so from 9 to 10, it's a riser system or amphitheater system. I call it amphitheater. It could be wrong. Just stadium, seating, whatever you want to call it. Different levels of loungers where you can overlook the pool. Everything faces the movie screen that hangs on the Lido deck. The Freedom Restaurant is where the Lido Deck is held, the Lido Deck Buffet. That's going to be the Mongolian walk up there when you first walk in. Bonsai Sushi Express going to be the starboard side window. The Deli, the Carnival Deli, going to be on the port side. And then you have your typical Grand Buffet set up back there, your salad bar, your desserts, your carving station, dessert station, and all that. Decent seating in this area. I'm not going to take off points for it because I every time I've sailed on this you know class of ship, I've always found plenty of seating either down here or up one deck where they have the old-fashioned barbecue, a lot of booths up there that no one ever knows about. So if you're sailing one of these Conquest class ships, check out deck number 10 on the Lido because it's pretty much always wide open. Leaving the Lido Marketplace and heading to the back of deck number nine, you're going to have the Pizzeria del Capitano. That's the Pizza Pirate 24-hour complimentary pizza back there. To the opposite of that is the Seafood Shack. You're going to have your crab legs, your, uh, what is it, lobster rolls, your fried shrimp, clam chowder, all that served just opposite of the Pizza Pirate. Two whirlpools back here, also an endless pool, and they did say this is an 18 and up pool in the back of the ship here. I asked one of the... They're not called lifeguards. Pool attendants is what his uh, title was. But he said this aft pool is adults only on deck number nine. Going up a deck to deck number 10, that's going to be your second story of the buffet area. This is where the guys, I keep calling it guys, it's the old-fashioned barbecue is located. Now the guys, Pig and Anchor, Smokehouse, Barbecue, offerings are served up here and the guys branded sauce is up here but it's officially not called guys pig and anchor smokehouse uh maybe because of a licensing issue not really sure but uh, regardless great barbecue up here that no one really knows about in fact when i came up here i had run of the barbecue place and run of the floor because there was no one up here so i got to sit where i wanted to sit and get to eat as much barbecue as i wanted to but in full disclosure i only had a little bit of barbecue because i had a guy's burger like five minutes before i came up here once you walk outside on deck number 10 on the starboard side there's a dedicated smoking area there with some tables set up and some umbrellas that'll take you all the way forward to i mean if you want to go to the very front of the ship that'll take you all the way to the front of the ship if you want to go that far if you go up to deck number 11 that's going to be the sports deck you have your jogging track up there your basketball court and your mini golf area about the basketball court, so I was on Carnival Conquest a couple of weeks ago when I first discovered this. If, you, if you're in the basketball court and you take the steps that are in the basketball court on the forward part of it, it'll take you up to a sun deck area that has about eh, 30 chairs up there. And there's a pretty decent views and pretty quiet up there. I'm not sure how loud it gets or how many people actually get up there on a sea day or even know about it. But now you know about it, so you should definitely check that out next time you're on Carnival Freedom. Just go into the basketball court, take the stairs right there, and go up one deck, and you have like a pretty much a wide open space to yourself. 
Deck number 10 midship is the Sun King Steakhouse. $38 to eat here as of April 2019. And you get your typical steakhouse experience. If you book the steakhouse on the first night of your cruise, they normally throw in a free bottle of wine. Deck number 10 is also home to the Waterworks Water Park. They installed this during the ship's recent dry dock in March 2019. So a couple of slides up here. And then one deck up is the spa. When you walk into Spa Carnival, you'll be greeted by a reception desk. And ladies, you'll go to the right-hand side. And guys, you'll go to the left-hand side. That'll take you back through the changing facilities and then right there to the gym eventually. But before you to the gym, a couple of things to note here. There is the sauna and steam room that's operational and complimentary to use. Also, the shower space in here is really big. So if you're, you know, if you want a little bit of extra space in the shower while the significant other is getting ready, pop up here and use this shower facility. It's usually not that crowded. And the gym is your typical gym with an aerobic studio, your bicycles, treadmills, uh, a little bit of lifting equipment in here. Basically enough stuff to work out all the carbs and the calories you've put on during your sailing. Decks number 12 and deck 14 going to be the Serenity on Carnival Freedom. Now half of deck number 12 is dedicated to... I guess the Camp Ocean, the kids program. The other part of deck 12 is all adults only. And then going up to deck number 14, both port and starboard side. So adults have the full run of deck 14 with the exception of the waterworks entrance. That's kind of midship or just right there at the slide basically on deck number 14. And that will about do it for our tour of Carnival Freedom. If you like this video and you'd like to see more cruise ship tours, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. My name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of Cruise Radio and the Daily Cruise Radio News Briefs. You can find both of those where you listen to your favorite podcast. Just type in Cruise Radio or Cruise Radio News. What do you think about Carnival Freedom? Do you like this class of ship? Will you sail her or have you sailed her? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.